And with me live in the studio are the poet and critic Tom Paulin, the journalist Echo Eschen, editor of Arena, and Jermaine Greer, author and lecturer at Newnham College, Cambridge. We start tonight with a disaster movie which was widely predicted to become a movie disaster. On the surface, James Cameron's Titanic, a recreation of the doomed 1912 voyage of the supposedly unsinkable liner, had a lot to worry about. At a rumoured budget of $200 million, it had become the most expensive film ever made. It was also incredibly long, three and a quarter hours, and yet the audience knew the ending before they went in. Cameron added suspense with a will-they-won't-they they romance between an American socialite played by Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio as a penniless artist travelling steerage. The subplot of the film, which has been a big success in America, is how his upward mobility is rudely interrupted by downward pressure. The couple fear they will be like ships that pass in the night, but as the audience already knows, they are unfortunately on a ship which isn't very good at passing things. Full steam ahead on Titanic from Jermaine Greer. What do you think of it? Well, for the first hour and a half, I guess, I thought this is really a marvellous movie. I love the beginning, which is the real footage of the real Titanic, and I love the way that you were drawn into the whole story and the way that it was presented to you immediately as a tremendous example of capitalist uh, hubris, really, that they think they can control everything, they control the world. And then you get the sort of Fritz Lang stuff about how this ship really goes through the water, the extraordinary shots of the engine rooms and so on, which were stunningly done. Um, and then you embark on the love story. And I reckon the love story is so crass it would embarrass Ryder Haggard. Uh, we've got a jewel which looks like a piece of blue glass which is called the heart of the sea uh, this jewel is going to be given to this socialite because she's going to marry this bloke with whom she's sharing a stateroom I really wanted Edith Wharton to come in and give him some advice on the manners of 1912 because it was all preposterous and when they got to the sort of dead calm in the middle of the film in the sense that they're beginning to sink so we've we've got to have lead up to the sex in the gold-plated Rolls-Royce in the cargo thing uh, I just thought this love affair has taken over the whole story the sinking of the Titanic is now unimportant compared to this preposterous love affair between stupendously beautiful Leonard DiCaprio okay well we'll talk about a little more about that in a moment Echo it's rare to have such a close link between the the plot and the film itself I mean he's Cameron has built this huge edifice which many people expected to fail. Um, do you think it works? See, I, I, I actually like James Cameron a lot as a film director because I, I think he's one of the, the most ruthlessly unsentimental of big budget Hollywood directors. And so, you know, I was kind of skeptical about this notion of, of recreating the, the whole thing of the Titanic as a romance. But what's interesting is I actually disagree entirely with Germain because my favourite part of this film is the latter part of it, actually when the Titanic begins to sink. I think all the way before that, I found this a ruthlessly efficient film. I found this a film where this love affair was kind of signalled so intensely, you know, with, 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 the, with the sense that so much of the time the camera is like caressing and shoving itself in the face of Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet so that you know they're beautiful, so that you know they're in love. And this happens over and over and over again. And it's only in the latter stages, when the, when the ship itself begins to sink, that two things happen. You get this incredible scene where the ship turns from horizontal to vertical and you see hundreds and hundreds of people falling through the air. And for me that's a kind of nightmarish moment actually. And it's actually quite a beautiful scene. And then actually after that what happens is you get all the pyrotechnics, all of the great technical things that James Cameron is very, very good at and has done in Aliens and, and lots of other films. All of that stuff is actually stripped away because what happens is you get Leonardo DiCaprio and you get Kate Winslet and they're in the water and one of them, at least, is freezing to death mm. and they're talking about love and they're talking about never letting go and never forgetting. But obviously, you know, we're talking about them dying here and actually I, I love that moment really because all of the artifice okay. just goes. We usually worry about Tom Paul and giving the plots away but we can say here that the ship sinks um, about halfway through. <laughs> yeah, does, what, yeah. um, what did you make of it? Well I, I, I began by thinking this is a very long movie I have no interest in the Titanic it's overworked it's an old chestnut there are endless book, books about it uh, it was built in Belfast so you know you grew up knowing about the Titanic it's a, it's a great uh, symbol of, of uh, every kind of disaster and then 
instantly I was just won by it. It's an extraordinary film. It just took me over completely. These two young people falling in love, taking hu huge risks, and that so scene again, we again, you, you preferred the romance actually to the special effects. Uh, well, I mean, the special effects were, were, were very powerful, and you know, the scene in the you know the, the the engine room was like something out of Dante or Doré's illustrations. You know, it was like hell, and there are all kinds of wonderful visionary moments, <coughs> ghostly moments, and it's strange moments which go oddly with the with, with the naturalism, but r really work. And it's just so winning. It's so powerful. I was exhausted emotionally at, at the end of it. It's a really powerful film, and 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 I thought Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, and I'd never been particularly uh, admiring of her. I thought they were wonderful. She looked like s someone out of Botticelli, and he was marvellous. He had this sort of brat pack, you know, young Martin Amos look, or, <laughs> huck, you know, Huck Finn look to him. You know that scene we saw right at the, the, yes, on, right. On the bow of the, of, of, of the Titanic? And just the way he acts, and the way it begins with his card game, and he actually mm. wins a ticket to go on the Titanic to fall in love and lose his life. It's marvellous. Well, it's I, I agreed with you more than I expected them. I, mean, I went expecting to really hate it and I think it is. It's gone with the waves, I fear. They, they have made the gone with the wind for the modern mm. age. Um, it clearly is that. It's this great epic. The romance today works. I think the special effects are the best I've ever seen. You know, I really believe the ship was sinking. The, the, the really interesting thing, isn't it, is that this is a film where we're entirely aware of the mechanics mm. of the film. What separates it from all of these traditional gone with the wind type films is that we know precisely where it's going and we know how much money it's cost. Mm. We also know that all of these hundreds of people on the ship, half of them are virtual actors. And many of those people aren't real. And so we know all about the skeleton of the film while we're watching it and yet actually it doesn't matter yeah exactly and that that's yeah. actually what's amazing about but it weren't you i was yeah. interested in some of the other people i wanted to see more of the unsinkable molly i thought she was a great character oh yeah she and i didn't terrific. get enough yeah. of her yeah, yeah. but also there, was, there were so many other people and around. the extraordinary the extraordinary scene of the designer though when he goes down mm. the man who's built the ship mm. when he goes is down man. with it but see yeah. what what happens is all of these people who are in the first two and a half hours of the film are there really to drive the plot. They're there really, mm. it's like they actually exist as characters in a very traditional disaster movie. Because with disaster oh. movies, you're always looking to see who's going to cop it, yeah. who's going to yeah. die, yeah. who's going to yeah. live. And actually, and that's why I like the film. After that, after the disaster happens, you still get more than an hour, and you still get something else Now, one thing there. worried me, and it's something Tom has often complained about in American films, the politics of it. They take what is basically a British story and they make it an American story. Also, which seems yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, well, 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 also, Mark, 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 this is basically no, a British story. No, well, which it is. It's our story. British myth. But anyway, apart from but that, there is the fact no, it's, that it's, it's uh, more than the, th the officers are shown shooting the people in third <laughs> class yeah. in order to st stop yeah. them getting on to yeah. the yeah. life raft. Yeah. Um, a kind of cheer goes up from the dying when the <laughs> Statue of Liberty hoves <laughs> into view. I yeah. mean, didn't this worry you at all, the, the political stance of it? Well, I mean, it, 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 it was obviously uh, ab about, about the class system, but it, wa it is a millennial movie. I mean, that's mm. what it is, absolutely. But do you, take it, do you take it as historically accurate? No, I wasn't worried about the historical accuracy of it I at all, but it was about what it feels like at the end of the 20th century to be heading towards the millennium in this uh, huge, uh, uh, as Jermaine says, uh, ship built out of capitalist hubris, heading towards disaster. I mean, that's, how, that's can, what how, that's how, how can you have how can you have a two hundred million dollar movie which attacks capitalism? I, I mean, I it, it, what, what? it is itself the perfect example. But you of do. Capitalist I mean, you, a, you actually yeah. have a, a, a sequence which is worthy of the Soviet filmmakers at their best, mm. where yeah. you go down into steerage and where are they having a yeah. really good time? Yeah, they're having a hoodie there. there. Yeah. Yeah. For, me, for me, this okay. is also a psychological movie because what I actually love about it is. Again, uh, you know, uh, I'll return to this scene where the ship is sinking, and for me, you come, you, you get the sense of a real nightmare being played out. And for me, I got a sense suddenly of how this event that happened, you know, 80 years ago, or whatever, is still part of our own current consciousness yeah. because it, it's, a, yeah. it's a genuine nightmare. This thing mm. that is supposed to sink, this thing that is supposed to confirm all the virtues and all the values of the modern age yeah. and of who and the, of progress and who we can be as people and all yeah. the possibilities yeah. that we have, <coughs> it goes down. We're going to have to leave it there and the discussion goes down with most hands raised in favour of Titanic which opens around the country tomorrow.